Everyone's arguing over the new term that's replacing Latino, or not, and nobody seems to be paying attention to what's linguistically interesting about it. Today, I'm going to blow your mind. Hi, I'm Dr. Taylor Jones, and this is Language Jones. In recent years, if you've been online or listened to NPR or watched the news on TV, you've no doubt come across the term Latinx. Latinx. Latinx? I'll say Latinx for now. Actually, how do you say it? Do you say it out loud? Do you pronounce it differently in Spanish and in English? Leave me a comment and let me know. Anyway, it's intended to replace Latino in Spanish and Latino in English and is ostensibly a remedy for the gendered and presumably therefore non-inclusive nature of Latino. Proponents argue that it's inclusive of people other than men, and the X is more inclusive than the at, the Latina roba, which is inclusive of men and women, but not non-binary and other people, usually on Twitter, folks with an X. Detractors argue that it's unpronounceable, Latin, or Latin X, which is explicitly English, and could lead to unpronounceable and uninterpretable language. Los personas son humanes. Le quises person quises son quises hermana quises. Some argue it's an English imposition on Spanish that isn't used or liked by 97% of Spanish speakers in the U.S., and others argue that that statistic is misleading and ignores las personas hispanohablantes who do use it. I try to respect people's language, culture, and self-determination, so I don't really care one way or the other, and if people I'm speaking to prefer Latinx or Latinx, I'll use it however they pronounce it. This is what linguists call audience design and regular people call being kind, and it helps you get along with people. I think people are, in general, so busy trying to prove that Latinx is wrong or right that they're missing what's actually interesting about it. The new, gender-inclusive language in Spanish respects an animacy distinction. More specifically, it's between human and non-human nouns and derived nouns. So people are busy arguing about Latinxes and Amigaxes and Personaxes, but nobody's talking about Excel Librex instead of El Libro, the book. Actually, this isn't entirely true as I've seen it extended to pets, as in algunos de mis perros, in writing, and mis gatos. That said, animals who have different names for the sexes, for instance, a bull and a cow, aren't included. That's not to say that you can't find las paquexes, but it's only used to dunk on gender-inclusive language from PETA, as far as I can tell. So the line's not human, non-human, but it's definitely pretty close. Perhaps humans and pets, but not domesticated animals. To a linguist, this is genuinely interesting, or rather it should be, but I haven't seen any linguists discuss this yet. That may be that I'm just following the wrong linguist online. So to the extent that people are actually using this language in Spanish, they're creating a three-gender system with masculine, feminine, and animate genders, and it triggers agreement in other words, like alguno, and we get to watch it develop in real time. This is super cool. We know that the masculine-feminine distinction in Romance languages, if you go far enough back, originated as an animacy distinction. I mean, really far back. We know that masculine-feminine neuter gave way to two non-sex genders in Dutch. Masculine and feminine collapsed into one, leaving common neuter distinction. But we might actually have the opportunity to watch a language develop an animacy distinction in nouns and pronouns over a generation or two in real time, and that's truly exciting. And what's interesting is not whether it's ruining Spanish, Spanish will be fine, but rather, how does this work for direct object and indirect object marking? What about indirect object pronouns for animate indirect objects, as in les escribe una carta a sus amigos? Should we expect the non-gender marking, but plural marking, le and les, to begin to respect a gender distinction between animate on one hand and masculine and feminine on another, as in le quises escribe una carta a sus amigueses? Is this primarily a written distinction? For whom and in what instances is it not? So my takeaways are, one, Latinx is genuinely linguistically interesting, but not because of the anger and vitriol over gender. People are so mad about gender, it's exhausting. But rather, because that social conflict and identity theorizing may give rise to a new grammatical system. And two, it's not hard to be kind. And sometimes it's better to choose to be kind than to try to prove that you're right. So why not be kind? Of course, if anyone knows of any linguistic work on these topics, I would love to read it. In the meantime, I can sum all this up with quit yelling at each other and pay attention to how interesting what's actually happening really is. Okay, so if you like what I'm doing with the channel, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when I release a new video. If you have burning questions about language, the weirder the better, please leave me a comment and I'll see if I can answer it. If you don't like what I'm doing with the channel, I guess 
you could still like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. Also, I have merch. There's a link in the description. Until next time.